and welcome to the Attractive Japan YouTube channel. My name is Lacey and today I will be giving you 10 tips for traveling off the beaten track into the Japanese countryside. So if you're ready, let's go ahead and get started. So today's video is more towards people who are traveling to the countryside, maybe for the first or second time. Um, there are tons of videos for people traveling to these cities and that's fine, but when you're going to the countryside, um, some things change or a lot of things are kind of different. So here's some advice. So number one is in regards to trains. This is also applicable for people in the city, but I highly recommend that you get an IC card. So IC cards are, make it easy. You don't have to look at the train table and try to find the exact change for your fare. This gets even more difficult in the countryside as the English assistance um, is basically non-existent for a lot of places. Um, so instead of having to fumble around, you just scan that IC card and you go right on through. You don't have to worry about anything and it's very convenient and a big time saver. To get these IC cards, you can purchase them at the airport, you can purchase them in vending machines around Tokyo, or you can talk to a train um, attendant to buy one. They do cost 500 yen, but you can trade it back at the end of your journey, you get whatever's left on it, and the deposit back minus a 220 yen service fee. So I highly recommend you get one. However, there are many train lines and you should buy the one based on what you'll be using most. While some places allow you to use other train lines cards, it's highly, again, just highly recommended pick the one that um, serves your area that you're traveling to. So you'll just have to do a little bit of research before you go, but there's plenty of English information available online. My other advice regarding trains is to get a train app. Um, there's a, a few different ones available. There's two that I specifically recommend. One is, of course, Google Maps. If you search your destination and hit the public transportation button, it'll show you your trains, your buses, anything that you need to use. And it'll give you a few options and the total fare cost along with the time. Um, that's what I personally use. The other app that I recommend is HyperD app. So this gives you a little more information than the Google app will, the Google map app. Um, it'll give you the fare times, uh, how long the journey will take. It, It'll give you the departing hours, your departure and arrival track, the name of your train, how much it'll cost, additional information, how long the journey will take, how many transfers you will have, and the total distance in kilometers. So a lot of information there. As long as you have one of these two, or if you research and you choose the other, this will help you to prevent yourself from getting lost or panicked in the countryside. So I highly recommend. Number two is in regards to buses. Um, they are very cheap, however, most info is in Japanese. Um, specifically in the countryside, as you get more local, trains will be fewer and sometimes you'll have to depend on buses. Um, and it's fine, they're cheap, they're convenient, and that's great, but sometimes because they don't have a lot of English information, it can be a little intimidating. Um, so to find the buses that you're looking for, again, I highly recommend using Google Maps. It shows not only trains, but bus information, and it'll help you find the bus stop. Oftentimes the bus stop that you get off at when you're returning, the get on bus stop will be on the opposite side of the road. So that's good information to have. Um, for Japanese buses, when you hear your, the name of your station or the name of your stop, you hit the button because they don't always stop at all stops. And another piece of advice is to just take the screenshots of the kanji of the places you want to go. And when you're unsure, show it to the bus driver. Show the kanji, even if they don't know English, they'll do their best to help and make sure you get off at the right spot and tell you if you're on the right bus. And also note that buses in Japan have a weekday and a weekend or holiday schedule. So make sure you're on the correct timetable and don't miss your bus because depending on how local you are, there may only be two to three buses a day. Number three, car rental. As you get more local and the options for transportation get fewer and fewer, car rental seems like a great option for many places that you may want to travel. Um, for car rental, again, it may be intimidating driving in a foreign country, but it opens up many doors of places to travel that you can't really easily get to with public transportation or you can't get to at all with public transportation. And it's not as hard as you think. 
For many foreigners, driving in Japan means driving on the opposite side of the road because they drive on the left side. And this is true for me. I'm from America, so it's the opposite side of the road for me. Um, but you, you get used to it. It doesn't take that long. Um, as long as you're being careful, it's not a big deal. And for those of you who want to do car rental in Japan, get an international driver's permit. This is available for many, many, many different countries. However, you have to get it before you leave your country. You cannot get it in Japan. So make sure you do your research and get your driver's permit before you leave. It's valid up to one year when you're in Japan. And you can do car rental and you can drive in Japan legally. Also, for my other Americans, then turning on red is a no no. Number four, Wi Fi. So when you're in the city, sometimes you can get away without having Wi-Fi because there's many public Wi-Fi options. When you're in the countryside, there is no public Wi-Fi options most of the time. Like, it's non-existent. So you need to make sure you get a portable Wi-Fi or a SIM card. The best way to do this is to research and book before you leave your country so that you can easily pick it up at the airport and have a stress-free time. Panicking and trying to find Wi-Fi is not a fun time. So again, highly recommend you rent your Wi-Fi and pick it up at the airport because there will be basically no public Wi-Fi in the countryside. However, if you find yourself without Wi-Fi, search for a convenience store. They will always have it, at least the major chains. Number five, cash. Japan is still very much a cash society. While the cities are starting to offer other payment options, um, such as electronic payments or credit cards, the countryside is very behind. So don't go expecting to be able to use your credit card or these options. Um, a lot of time with local restaurants, local shops, they will only accept cash. So have it ready. You don't want to find yourself in a hard spot with no money. Um, if you do run out of money, the convenience stores will always have an ATM, so go there. Number six, hand towels, tissues, and hand sanitizer. So even now, when you go more local, you're bound to find a bathroom lacking in supplies. It just happens. Train stations, subway stations, um, local parks, old temples. Once you get more rural, the less stocked bathrooms seem to be. So for the hand towels, a lot of Japanese people um, carry hand towels anyway, so that's very rare or uncommon for bathrooms to have towels or dryers. So hand towel is useful unless you would like to wipe your hands on your clothes. For the tissues, having a little pack of the tissues would be helpful because the more local bathrooms often run out of toilet paper like very often don't doubt it because it's bound to happen and hand sanitizer for whatever reason a lot of local bathrooms or a lot of japanese bathrooms don't always have soap this seems to be something normal people don't really doubt it but if you're a germaphobe or you like making sure your hands are clean bring a little thing of hand sanitizer with you just in case it's not bad to just be prepared, just in case these things are small things and useful, so bring them. <laughs> Number seven, language. When you're in the countryside, there's more of a language barrier. They have less English assistance. A lot of times in the cities, there's someone that knows English or they have English guides, English signs. The more local you get, the less this occurs. So just be mentally prepared for this. And also consider downloading the Google Translate app because it has a scanner to where you can scan signs and boards to translate it when you can't read the kanji. Um, but again, just be mentally prepared. It happens, it's okay, you'll be fine. Number eight, budget traveler volunteering. When you're traveling to the countryside or a lot of people who travel to the countryside, what they're looking for is a local real experience to meet local people, experience the way of life. And a great way to do this is volunteer traveling. In Japan, there are three major companies that allow this and it's Woof, Helpex, and Workaway. 
So if you really want to get local and save a little bit of money by volunteering, uh, this is a good option for you. Um, these sites, you in return for helping the family, doing some work for them, they host you at their house, so you know, it's a place to stay and a great way to, you know, make lasting relationships, bonds, get to know people, um, and just a cheap way to learn about country life. Number nine, budget. So there's all kinds of advice out there for saving money in Japan. My biggest one for you is consider night buses instead of the Shinkansen. If you're not planning on using the Shinkansen a lot, the bullet train, getting a pass may not be worth it. And in that case, consider night buses. It allows you to travel overnight and sleep on the bus and also get to your next destination. I can't promise that they're the best, the most comfortable situation, but when you're on a budget, very helpful. There's a few companies that do this. Two of the big ones are Willer Express and JR. And number 10, check the time. When you're in the Japanese countryside, things close early, things close on time. There's a lot of stores will not do from lunch to dinner continuously open or you know they will have an off day or two off days randomly throughout the week so you want to check your times if you want to eat lunch at a restaurant make sure you do it during regular lunch time because it's likely that they will close at two o'clock and when you're looking for dinner or going to tourist attractions or getting on your next bus train those will also close early in the countryside so make sure you check your times some tourist destinations close at like four or five o'clock which from a Western perspective is super duper early, but for Japanese it's standard. So to make sure you're not disappointed, check your times, check the bus time. Some buses stop at 9, 10, even earlier. So make sure you're prepared, make sure you're well researched, to make sure you do everything that you wanna do. Anyway, those are my 10 tips for traveling the Japanese countryside. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment down leave them in the comments down below i will be sure to answer them if you like this video or any of these tips give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more also if you're searching for any local destinations check out our website or our other videos where i take you around japan to some destinations that i enjoy and i will see you next time thank you bye